a beautiful actress meets her deformed co-star, and they soon develop an unlikely friendship. Mabel walks into a hallway and notices the piercing stares of the people around her. When she reaches her room, she hears them talking badly about her. Because of this, she looks for her brother, who is busy doing an operation somewhere in the building. As the operation continues, Mabel walks into the room and accidentally breaks a flask, which startles the doctor and the nurse. Although they're in a critical situation, the doctor prioritizes Mabel's concern, so he halts their task and tells the nurse to leave momentarily. Just then, they hear a gunshot in the distance, distracting everyone on the set. It turns out that this is all a movie shoot, and Mabel is an actress playing a blind character named Frida. Everyone then calls for a break, and as they're busy doing their tasks, an interviewer, Joan Beckett, searches for Mabel. She later finds her in a room where she's getting prepped for the next set. After Mabel acts for another scene, Joan finally gets to interview her. However, the questions are a bit thought-provoking, focusing on the movie's bold and exploitative casting. When asked for her thoughts, Mabel replies with vague, inspirational answers. After the interview, Mabel asks the director and writers about a certain detail for an upcoming scene. She asks how Frida, a blind woman, is supposed to see beauty in merely touching a man's eyes when their color and placement are all that make eyes beautiful. The director and writers then reply that this isn't supposed to be interpreted logically but poetically. That night, Mabel watches one of her earliest movies with her fellow actress. When she's had enough of that, she heads back to her room. But Max, who plays her doctor brother, approaches her in the hallway. He subtly flirts with her, but Mabel dismisses his attempts and goes to her room. The following day, Mabel prepares herself to meet her co-star, who will be one of the main characters of the movie. However, she gets overwhelmed and ends up panicking in the bathroom. When she finally musters the courage, she heads to the hall, where she sees a bunch of people with unusual characteristics enter the set. Just then, Max introduces Mabel to Rosenthal, a man with a severely deformed face. She shakes her co-star's hand, but she doesn't stay for long because she needs to get ready. After this, Sarah Wagner, one of the actresses who plays a nurse, asks the unique actors about their past experiences on movie sets. Some have acted in quite a few, which impresses her and Max. Later, Mabel sees Rosenthal alone in the garden, desperately trying to memorize his long lines. She then approaches him, but she seems intimidated by his appearance. At first, she tries talking to him while staring at the ground, but as the conversation gets more engaging and fun, she gradually looks him in the eyes. Just then, Rosenthal asks Mabel how to act, and she teaches him by acting out certain emotions. Her acting talents impress Rosenthal, while Mabel is entertained by his sense of humor. Although the two are only starting to get acquainted, their conversation is cut short when they are told to prepare for the next set. Later, Rosenthal acts out a scene where his character is first introduced. However, the director gets annoyed when Rosenthal fails to capture the vision that he wants, and he ends up repeating the scene over and over. Rosenthal then asks what he should be feeling at that moment so that he'd get a better grasp of the scene. The director explains that he should feel like a surprise to the audience, and he must emerge from the shadows while bearing that in mind. Rosenthal nods, and he prepares to act on the scene again. After this, Rosenthal and Mabel walk out of the set, but Molly, one of Mabel's friends, informs them that the baby scene is ongoing and that they should watch. However, Mabel remembers that Rosenthal said babies hate him, along with cats and dogs too. Molly thinks Rosenthal is being too harsh on himself, and the two end up talking more. Meanwhile, Mabel notices another actor dressed in a mask similar to Rosenthal's face. She follows him to the director's office, where she sees everyone brainstorming for the movie. Just then, she gets a full glimpse of the masked actor, and somehow she gets horrified by this. As she slowly backs away, she hears that the director plans to use digital effects on some scenes because they can't afford it. Suddenly, a new script is handed to Mabel, so she finds a quiet room and reads it. Then, as she walks towards the window, she sees Rosenthal alone outside. He's also given a new script, which he's also trying to read. Just then, Max approaches him and immediately inspects the camera in Rosenthal's hands. He begins complimenting Rosenthal's talents, then asks to take a photo with him using the camera. Max then asks if he could get a copy of the photos, but Rosenthal replies that he can't develop them because he's on medication and the chemicals might be harmful. Hearing this, Max gets fussy and asks if he doesn't like him. However, Rosenthal explains that he only doesn't know him, but he does like him. Later, a representative 
from the hospital where they're filming wakes Mabel up, complaining about the actors disturbing the patients on the other side of the hospital. As she walks Mabel to the area where the actors have gathered, she rants that the children are scared of the unusual actors. Meanwhile, Max asks Sarah if she's talked to Rosenthal because he thinks he's such a great guy. He then says that he wants to talk to more of the actors. Elsewhere, Mabel sits with Michelle, her makeup artist. Mabel then notices that a pretty lady is dancing with Rosenthal, and Michelle replies that she's his wife. Just then, Mabel starts talking about how some of the unusual actors are frauds. She then points to the Siamese twins, Ava and Miriam, commenting that they can easily be separated with an operation. Next, she points to Jack Jacqueline, a hermaphrodite, and how she must be faking it too. Michelle laughs at her remarks, but she says that she's sure that Rosenthal's the only legit one. This redirects Mabel's attention to the woman dancing with Rosenthal, and she comments that she never knew he had a wife. However, Michelle says that she's not sure of this information because she only assumed it. Just then, Mabel sees a deformed woman dressed like Freda, and she wonders who she is. Michelle replies that it's supposed to be her after her character gets burnt, and this surprises Mabel because she thought it was going to be one quick shot. Michelle then replies that the director wants emphasis on real suffering. Later that afternoon, Mabel dances with Rosenthal, and she casually brings up the woman he was dancing with earlier. She wonders if she's his wife, and Rosenthal confirms this. However, he adds that he's never seen her before since he was just joking about being married. He then goes on to say that he'll probably die single since he's a bit too picky. Rosenthal then asks Mabel if she's married, and she replies no, explaining that no one was really good for her. Just then, Mabel brings up their upcoming scene, which involves lovemaking. Rosenthal reassures her that they can get stunt doubles if she's uncomfortable with it, but she replies that she's okay with it. Then, as night approaches, Mabel ends up sleeping in a hotel with the rest of the crew. Sarah explains that the hotel is not handicapped accessible, so the other actors are to sleep in the hospital instead. This worries Mabel, but she has no choice but to go. In the hotel, the butler tells them that a dead body is found near the area and that the killer, who allegedly has odd features, is still on the loose. However, despite this, the crew ends up resuming their party. Mabel also gets terribly drunk and ends up dancing with the butler. The following day, she goes to the set and finds the halls empty. She then learns that the camera is busted and that everyone has gathered in the auditorium to screen the recorded scenes. There, Rosenthal has reserved a seat for her, and she sits beside him. As the room darkens and the video plays, the movie story reveals a scene where Freda acts kindly to Rosenthal's character, and this is the time when she's still blind. As the scene goes on, Mabel can't help but look at Rosenthal with pity. Later that day, the camera finally gets fixed, so the shooting commences. This time, Sarah shoots a scene with Bruto, a man with a disfigured face. However, the director is strict about the details, and they end up repeating the scenes. After this, Max shoots his scenes, where it's revealed that he's a doctor who wishes to cure people with disabilities. In one of the scenes, his operation fails, and this is somehow linked to Rosenthal, who is now acting enraged. He also shoots a scene with Mabel, where he tells her character, Freda, that her eye operation is successful. However, a huge part of the plot is also revealed, where Bruto is actually his brother. As the shooting goes on, the story progresses, and Freda finally gets to see with her new eyes. However, as soon as she lays eyes on Rosenthal, she screams in fear and runs for her life. As she desperately tries to escape, she finds herself in a room filled with other unusual patients, and this scares her even more. She then runs to the operating room, where she finds Max's character working on a patient. Suddenly, they realize that the patients have gathered in the room, and they're rebelling against the doctor. Rosenthal then appears with a gun, angry at the doctor for not being able to give him his end of the bargain. The doctor reassures him that he'll fix them just as he did with Freda, but Rosenthal doesn't believe him and pulls the trigger. To his surprise, the gun is empty, so the doctor uses this opportunity to kill him instead. However, Rosenthal fights the doctor and ends up stabbing him with a scalpel. He then walks towards Freda, but she hysterically screams at him to stay away. Meanwhile, Sarah, who's being held back by one of the patients, warns Freda about the man behind her. When Freda turns around, the man splashes a harsh chemical on her face, causing her excruciating pain. She then screams as her whole face has been burnt. After that day's shoot, Mabel and the crew return to the hotel. Just like before, she's concerned about leaving Rosenthal and the other casts. Unbeknownst to them, spending the night at the hospital is not as bad as it seems. While the rest of the crew sleep in the hotel, Rosenthal and the cast play with the team's camera and other equipment.
equipment. They even act and shoot scenes of their own. And they also bond while chatting over a campfire. One night, they pitch their movie ideas while gathered around the fire. Nora, who plays Mabel's deformed double, tries introducing her movie idea, but Rosenthal's too tired to listen, so he goes to bed. The others still encourage Nora to share, and she does. In her movie idea, Mabel gets splashed with real acid, which instantly burns her face. Months later, she goes to the hospital for her monthly checkup, where her deformed face is finally revealed. The accident also leaves Mabel depressed, so she turns to alcohol and smoking. Later that night, she goes to a pub, where a man gets interested in her and buys her a drink. However, Mabel isn't even grateful about this, and she speaks rudely to the man, which leads him to leave. The following day, Mabel goes to a diner and notices that everyone is staring at her. Just then, a man with a familiar voice approaches her, and she gets shocked when she realizes that it's Rosenthal. She almost doesn't recognize him because of how changed his appearance is. Rosenthal, who now looks like an ordinary man, explains that Goodrich, the famous doctor from the hospital, made all of this possible. He also adds that the other odd casts have also been operated on, and they now live normal lives. He then goes on to say that he now has his dream job and a dog. Just then, Rosenthal tells her that Goodrich heard about her condition and he wants to help her. Although Mabel is skeptical, he encourages her to go because he wants to finally be with her. This marks the end of Nora's movie idea, and the following day, the casts and crew shoot the last scene of the actual movie. Here, Freda makes love with Rosenthal, and they actually shoot the full scene. The crew is speechless with how good the acting is, and the director doesn't even bother correcting some of the details. After this, everyone wraps it up. Sarah then tells Mabel that the car is ready for her, but before she can leave, Max asks if he can talk to her alone. He tells her that it's been a pleasure working with her. Then he plants a soft kiss on her lips before leaving. When she's finally alone, Mabel looks at her photo with Rosenthal. She then walks to the window and sees the odd crew enter the bus, and Rosenthal leaves with them. After this, she gets in a car which will take her to the airport. For some reason, the driver is a bit chatty, and he explains that they must take another route because the police blocked the other one due to the recent killings. Just then, the driver asks if she's an actress, to which Mabel answers yes. He then goes on to say that they're both artists since he's an author. The driver uses this opportunity to casually introduce his book, adding that he plans to make a movie about it. It talks about his life story, where he escaped from his country, Nigeria. However, he's sad to say that he left his family there. He then tells Mabel that she can download the book on Amazon and that she must give it a five-star review when she's done reading it. On top of being an author, the driver also claims to be a math wizard. To prove this, he tells Mabel to give him any number to multiply, so she gives him the most random digits she can think of. When she checks his answer on her phone's calculator, she realizes that he's correct. This amazes Mabel, who asks what else the driver is freakishly good at. He replies that he's also making a movie show. Then he points to the camera before them. He explains that he wants to make a math show where passengers react to his math lessons, and he'll post this on YouTube to help children understand the subject. He thinks that when it gets famous, it'll be enough for him to plead with the president to bring his family into the country. Mabel, on the other hand, is concerned that he recorded without her consent. However, the driver clarifies that he hasn't yet, and he won't do it unless she allows it. With that, the driver asks if it's alright to record her, and Mabel hesitates to reply. While Mabel is relaxed in the luxury of being transported in her own car, the unusual actors, including Rosenthal, are all cramped in the bus. Despite being welcomed by their pretty co-stars, when the filming is over, the odd-looking actors are still separated from the rest, which they accept quietly. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.